What's up CNC woodworkers? My name is Corbin Dunn and today I want to talk about my Batman box with secret locking mechanism. The secret locking mechanism is pretty fun. So the box lid is locked right now and the key, you just take it and you drop it down. A little bit of a twist and you hear two clicks and then the lid comes right off. Then you have your box. I'm pretty excited about this because it was not easy to machine. The limitations on my machine are pretty uh, severe in the X, Y axis. So I, I had to figure out how I could create it in multiple operations to get the size that I wanted. My first one I made was just too small because I scaled it down to fit on my machine. This one I figured out a clever way to do it in multiple operations that I'll talk about. So, follow along as I make it. So this is the basic box design in Fusion 360. Check out the description and download the model so you can play around with it yourself. One thing to notice is that I modeled the stock directly up in Fusion 360. This will be the first thing I'll need to make in the workshop. Once the stock was prepped, I went over to the CNC machine. I prefer to machine the outside of the box first, and I do it upside down. Now, this project was larger than the x-axis travel of my machine, so I had to carve it out in two operations. I couldn't just split the operation in half as my bit was not long enough and would have collided with the unmachined stock. I had to machine away some extra portion to compensate for this. I did this by designing an extra angled piece in Fusion 360. I also designed in a new origin point for the second machining operation. This meant that I needed a way to reorient the piece without affecting the Z offset. I mounted an extra spoil board on top of my regular spoil board with bolts that would allow me to reposition it. I then used my usual blue tape and CA glue hold down technique to mount it to this movable spoil board. Okay, so now I have half of it cut out and I can loosen up my bolts on my movable spoil board and move it over a bit. And then I can indicate in or tram in the piece by the portions that I cut beforehand. And this way I can get it perfectly aligned and also have a new location to do my XY origin. It's always a bit nerve wracking watching the bit plow down into your piece and hoping you didn't mess up. And in this particular case, everything was okay. One of the reasons I leave this little extra bit on the top is so I can tram it in. After I flip it over, I adjust the tape.
table so that it is trimmed in pretty straight and then I can start the top operation. So similar to doing the second operation on the bottom, I had to do a slight incline to avoid bit collisions and I also left a little flat area to indicate the piece in on the X and Y axis after I move the table over a bit. Then I could go ahead and start machining the final bits of it. The next thing I did was work on the locking mechanism and here it is in Fusion 360. I created this slight elliptical shape and as it rotates it will push a little shaft in and out to lock or unlock the box and it will suck in with magnets on the end to ensure it unlocks. The way it's going to rotate is I will have a small little key that drops down on the opposite side. It locks on is held on by magnets and can be twisted. And as you twist this little key, it will move the ellipse and unlock or lock the box. I did a lot of the same hold down techniques as before, so I'm not going to really go into them again. And I just machined out the little ellipse and the key shapes. The hard part was figuring out how to get the magnets into the item without a proper press. And I would just use some tape to kind of hold the magnet in place and a vise to kind of squish it on in. And this worked pretty well but I did have to adjust the size of the holes to be a little larger to prevent the wood from splitting. I did a few iterations before I found some that worked pretty well, and then it was on to making the lid, which is pretty much the same as before. There are two holes in the wood, one at the top and one at the bottom, for a small metal shaft that will engage to actually lock it to the box bottom. I drill them out manually on the CNC machine by just kind of doing some ad hoc placing and drilling down. I had a difficult time figuring out how to drill the holes inside the box that mates to the ones in the lids. I ended up just using a bit in my Dremel and kind of angled it inwards on a flexible shaft and kind of just eyeballed it. I tried to use a jig, but the jig really didn't work, and so eyeballing it kind of worked. If anyone has any good ideas on how I could do this better, let me know in the comments. The shafts are just made from some steel nails I had laying around, and I used my portable lathe to clean them up a bit. Okay, I want to show how this works for a final assembly. So the center thing is a pin that holds everything in. It is just made from a nail with the head still on it. Alright, so what we have here are some steel rods cut from the nails that I showed earlier. And there are some grooves here for magnets to ride in. The magnets are doubled up because I found that one magnet was simply not strong enough to work through the wood. There are also magnets on the ends and they're going to suck in the shafts. And the center is a bearing to prevent binding when I assemble it. The way it works is the key will be placed on the outside and lined up with the magnets on the ellipse. It will hold in place and allow me to twist it. By having the grooves, it makes it deeper and will have less thickness of the wood for the magnetism to go through. So let me show you the assembly. The center lips will go ahead and drop in with the magnets. I push the nail into the center. I will eventually use a dot of super glue to hold it in and hopefully not push through the uh, center all the way to the other side. So here you can see how the ellipse will move and move the shafts. But one of the problems is the shafts won't move inwards when the hole gets larger. And so that's the purpose of the magnets, to suck it in. So it sucks in all at once to unlock it and then to 
locket, the elliptical shape will push the shafts outwards and lock into the grooves in the box. So let me show how this works on the other side with the key and the magnets. I'm going to use a piece of cloth and I will eventually glue a piece on in just a short bit, but I want to show how it works. So the magnets line up with the other ones on the inside in those grooves. Then I can flip it over and I can show you twisting the key on the top, pushing it out to lock, pushing inwards and the magnets suck in the pieces to unlock. Locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. So last thing I really had to do was to just put a little bit of spray on a piece of cloth and attach it to the back of my key to prevent scratching on the top. So I put a little bit on, let it dry, and added the cloth, and then cut out around it with an X-Acto knife.